Hi everyone, thank you again for joining us today. We're really excited to get to walk you through some of the widgets on our website. Uh, before we begin, I would love to introduce myself and some of the Teach Starter staff that'll be joining me today. My name's Natalie. I'm the U.S. Resource Production Manager here at Teach Starter. Before joining the team, I was in the public schools for 20 years. I was a classroom teacher for 10 years. I taught first grade, fourth grade, and sixth grade. Then I moved into an instructional coach position for five years, um, working with grades pre-K to five. And then my last five years, I was an assistant principal with a focus on curriculum and instruction. And again, that was in grades pre-K to five. Um, the rest of the Teach Starter staff that will be joining me will be answering your questions today. They'll introduce themselves in the Q&A uh, portion of this. So let's talk about that for a moment. At the bottom of the screen, you'll see the Q&A function. That is where we ask that if you have any questions throughout the webinar, please jump in. This is where the Teach Starter staff will be um, talking with you guys. They will be answering any questions you guys may have. If you have any comments throughout, if you um, have thought about any ideas, if ideas pop into your head as we're going through some of these widgets, we would love to hear from you. Um, teaching is all about having that strong community uh, where we help each other out, and we definitely want to create that here. So we would love for you guys to um, log any of your um, ideas in that Q&A function so everybody else can um, hear your great ideas or hear the questions that you have. So let's go ahead and let's get started. So you'll see on the website um, here at the top, you'll see that beside the home feed, you'll see where it says resources. You want to click on this and go down to widgets and this will take you to our page full of widgets um, and so we're not going to be going through all of these however I would love to um, go through about 10 of them with you guys today time pending so let's go ahead and jump in I would love to start with spin wheel so this is one of our newer widgets um, once you click on it you'll see the play button you'll go ahead and click play, you'll see that the spin wheel is here. Uh, you can use the spin wheel for so many different things in your classroom. First, you can use it as a prize generator. Um, so I would love to show you, if you'll click on this up at the top, it's the settings, um, and we'll come over. I actually already have something, and I'll show you guys in a moment how you can make these lists. But I already have a list that I've created on my account that's called Prize Wheel. So if you click on it, you can add any extra prizes that you may have here. We'll click out. So it's great as a prize generator. Um, so once your students get all of their compliments or they've spelled out prize on the board, however you want to play it, then they can come, you can spin the wheel and the wheel will tell them what prize they're gonna get. So we'll just spin, and it lands on Fun Friday. So the kids have earned their prize of Fun Friday. Um, you can also choose to remove. If you click remove here, you'll see that that removes it from the prize wheel completely. And next time when you come in, um, it'll, it'll come back on. But um, for the time being, you can remove if you'd like. So that's one way that you can use the spin wheel. Another one is to use um, as spin and speak activities. Those are really big right now. You can have um, some set for um, uh, sentence starters for your social emotional learning. Um, so again, I have that already programmed in. We can spin the wheel. Students will be partnered up together. I feel happy when and they have to complete that sentence um, starter with their partner. It's a great way just to work on those oral language um, skills that um, we know are so vital for our students. Also working on those social emotional um, 
learning skills that are so important for our students. Again, we can remove it since the students have already done it. If we're going to do three or four in a row, we can just remove. That removes it completely. We'll spin the wheel again in a new one. I feel motivated when, again, set the timer, students turn and talk with their partners. Um, if you don't want to remove it, you don't have to. You can just click close. It will stay on the board. You can spin again. That's one way. Another is to do back to school favorites. Um, this will be a really great thing to do um, another spin and speak activity, but it's focused on back to school and it's all about students favorite things. Um, again, you can partner students up and Sorry about that, forgot to close out. Um, so then I'm gonna spin. Again, it's gonna be some of their favorite things. My favorite game is, so now they're getting to have an icebreaker activity where they're getting to learn more about each other and really find um, those favorite things that they have in common. Um, so those are a couple of ways. Another way is doing some blends. You could do a blending activity where you have different blends on the wheel, set a timer, spin the wheel, have the students write words that include that blend that the spinner lands on. You can do the same thing with rhyming words where you spin the wheel, set the timer, and students have to write a list of words that rhyme with the word that, that shows up. You can also use it as a brain break generator. Um, just put some different exercises in the wheel, spin, and set a timer, and students have to complete that exercise for 15 or 20 seconds um, until the timer goes off. Then remove it from the spin wheel and spin again. Um, great way to get students up and active for a quick brain break before setting them back down and getting going again. Um, now let me show you really quickly how to make those word lists. So you may be going, hey, I need to know how to do the word list. Um, so to get to the word list, we're going to come back over to the home feed. Click on the home feed and you'll see where it says word list. If you'll click on that word list, you'll see at the very top, you can create a new word li list here. You also can see that there are other word lists that I've already created for my account. Um, I have drama vocabulary, that exercise generator I was just telling you about, um, where I have put in exercises, spin the wheels, students can, can do those exercises, the blends. Um, so you'll see if I wanted to go in, let's say that there was another um, blend that I wanted to add in. All I have to do is come over and click this edit button and I'll be able to go in and add whatever blend that I would like to add. Um, the thing to note on this is when you add a blend, you're going to want to add a comma um, after this and then add your blend in. Then you'll just come and you'll click um, update list and you'll see that your list is then updated. But let's go ahead, if you wanted to add a new list, you would come over, click the new list, you'll name your new list, whatever you'd like, you'll enter your words, and you'll hit create list, and it'll uh, generate that list for you. Um, so this is a great way in your planning. If you go ahead and, and plan out some of these things, you can go ahead and get your word list in for the following week, um, so they're already set there and ready to go. You can also delete word list once you've used them. So if you're done with blends, you know you're done with blends, you can click it and then come click delete list and it'll get rid of that li word list for you and you won't um, see it there anymore. Um, so that's a little bit about that. Let's go back over to our widgets page now. So that again was our spin wheel widget. We also have um, another one that is the toggle widget, which is right next to it. I would love to show you guys. Um, this is kind of a spin on, on Boggle. Um, so if you'll come again, you can hit play. So for this one, um, to get started, again, you're going to click on the settings and there's several different things you can do. Here you can actually choose your board size. 
Um, so of course, the younger your students, the smaller your board size you're gonna want, and the older your students, the larger. Um, we're gonna go ahead and stay on a four by four, and then you can also choose if you want all of the letters to be uppercase or lowercase letters. Um, and then there's a timer um, that you can enable. If you don't want your students to have a timer, you don't have to. You can just click that and uncheck it and you'll disable the, the timer. Um, it also kind of gives you some rules and some scoring if you'd like to do that. Once we're done, we're gonna come and click play. And this is our board. So some teachers um, get confused and they want to, to kind of highlight. This is not a highlight board. It really is just a board for students to look at and students on their own paper are gonna generate their list. So they're looking for building words, trying to connect um, letters that are adjoining. It can adjoin either vertical, horizontal, or as long as the corners touch, then that also will count. They can only use each letter once in that word. Um, so a great way that students can use this is by um, having a whiteboard, if you have many whiteboards, or they can just use their journal and just write down as many words as they can find. For example, one of the words they could find is house. You have the H, the O, oh, so sorry, the U, the S, and the E. So they could have built the word house on this one. This is a great activity that students can, you can use with your students as a bell ringer activity. So when students come in, you can have this on the board um, and students will immediately sit down once they've unpacked. Um, they can go ahead and try finding as many words as they can while they wait for the rest of the class to come in and get ready to start their learning. You can use it as a rotation for word work or a whole class word work activity. Um, for struggling students, you may want to provide clues for different words on the board. Um, so you could say, I see a word um, that says where someone lives. Um, so that may help them to figure out the word house. Um, it can also be played individually. You can play this with partners. It can be played in teams. Um, if you want to have it as one of your rotations for word work, you can just pull it up on one of the classroom computers. Um, be sure and disable that timer. Um, if you're going to do that, you would come over, disable the timer, and have it to where students are going to start and, and try to find. You can restart the game by clicking this um, or resume the game, um, which will give you a new board. Uh, so that is our toggle widget. Next up that we're gonna look at uh, today is gonna be our dice roller widget, um, which is this one right next to it. Uh, so this dice roller widget uh, can be used in a variety of ways in the classroom. Again, you'll want to hit the play button. Um, so if you come again with the setting button in the top right corner, if you click on it, you can actually say the number of dice that you want. Uh, six is the max number of dice that you can play on this, um, but you can dictate how many dice you want to play with. You can also come down because I chose two dice, um, I can actually choose for each die what I want that um, to, to be. Do I want it to have one through six, one through eight, um, all the way up to one to 20? Um, then we also have one that goes by tens um, from 10 to 90. So I can set the first one, I can set the second one, um, and then this one, show results after the roll. Let me show you what that does. When I roll my dice, it'll actually show the results at the bottom. If you don't want those results to be shown, um, all you're gonna do is come and tick where it says show results, and you'll see that it takes that away. So now this can be used for a warm-up activity. 
Um, so if you are working on expanded form with your students, this would be great. Um, you could have the students actually write the expanded form and then that standard form for that number um, using these. You can also do some where they roll the two number cubes, they create the number, which this one would be 59, and then they would have to round that number um, to the nearest tens place. You can also do it where you're rolling multiple dice if you want to do the rounding. Say you want four number cubes, you're going to set all of them zero to nine. Now when I roll them, you can have your students make the largest number using those four digits um, and then round to the nearest thousands place. Or you can have them round to the nearest tens place with this one, um, working on all of those skills. You could also have them roll uh, these numbers, make the largest number, and place it on an open number line. There are a lot of different ways you can use these numbers rolled um, as a quick warm-up activity with your students before math class begins. Um, you can use it as a whole class activity um, with one of our role to create activities. Um, if you, uh, on our website, search role to create, um, we have a whole resource collection. One of our team members will drop that now in the Q&A. Um, they'll drop that resource collection link to you guys. You guys can click on that link. Um, you can use this with any of those. You'll just want to grab one. Um, you'll want to roll one of the dies. And you'll want it to be a one to six because all of our roll to creates are on that. And then you'll just roll the one. It's a one, and so students will have to do what number one shows. We also have a lot of roll and um, roll and um, resources, which are roll and read, roll and comprehend. Um, we have one that is um, a vocabulary um, roll resource. So you'll definitely want to search either roll two or roll and. If you'll search by both of those um, in the search bar, click enter, then it'll bring you to those. Um, these work great with this as a whole class activity. Um, you can also practice comparing numbers in the primary grades. Choose two of those number cubes, one of the, uh, both of them as zero to 20. Um, roll and the students have to write a comparison statement on a dry erase board or you can create some um, cards for them to hold up one that says is greater than one that says is less than one that says is equal to um, then they can roll and as a, a whole class you tell them to choose their card they lift it up and show you quick easy formative assessment um, so you can see which students are still struggling that you need to pull into your guided math groups. Uh, you can also use these for an array race. Um, so if you guys are working um, on arrays in the classroom, students partner up, uh, you can print off one of our, um, we have a graph paper that is one centimeter um, grid on the website. One of our team members will again drop that into the Q&A. Um, that link, but they share one of those grids. Player one, you'll, you'll roll for them. You roll the number cube, that's for player one. They create the array on the grid. Um, again, writing the answer. Um, and then player two rolls, or you roll for player two. Again, they create that grid. Um, that is a, a great way. They continue to go back and forth. You continue rolling for the entire class even though students are partnered up. Um, roll those two. If it rolls a six and a three, they create a six by three array. They write 18. At the end of the game, you know that the game is ended when students can no longer create arrays on the grid. The entire grid is filled. Then the student that has the greatest area filled on the entire grid will be the winner for that game. So that's a fun one for students to play. Um, so again, all of those incorporating the dice roller here. 
The next one we're gonna look at is our vocabulary word of the day spinner. This is another great widget that you can use as another bell ringer activity at the start of the day. So while you're waiting for those students to come in, um, again, to get started, you can choose any of your word list. Um, it can be for any subject area. Let's say that we're currently working on drama in our ELA classroom. So we can have our, we can have our drama vocabulary word list here. It gives us all of them. And then we can choose our activities. Let's say I'm an upper grades teacher, uh, sorry, a middle grades teacher, and I'm wanting to work on this drama vocabulary. I spin the word, the word is set, and now I spin the activity that the students will do. So the students are gonna write three clues that would help someone guess this word. So again, they're really having to know that drama vocabulary that you guys have been working on in the classroom, um, but yet it's, it, it's being done in a more engaging way. So just project this on your dry erase board. Um, you spin the word, spin the activity before you go pick up students when they come back in. Um, the bell ringer activity is already up there. No prep, um, just that simple. Uh, you can also use it as a five minute filler activity. I don't know about you guys, but um, I would go into massive panic mode if my lesson was over and there were five minutes left of class. I knew I needed to fill that somehow. However, um, if I didn't, I knew my students would talk and get out of hand. Um, so this is a great one of those five minute uh, filler activities that you just need something quick and easy. Um, all you have to do, pull up the widget, spin the word, spin the activity. Again, it'll show um, a new word. It'll show a new activity. Well, I say that, it's the same activity. Um, so each time they'll find a new, um, they'll have to create that activity or do that activity um, with the word. If you're doing it as a, as a five minute filler, again, you could do it as a whole class if you'd like to, or um, have students do it independently or with a partner, any way you wanna do it. Um, so that's our vocabulary word of the day. Another one that I wanna show you guys is our visual writing prompts. There are so many ways that you can use these writing prompts with your students. Again, I'm gonna push play. Um, so one thing you can do is you can either leave these up. Let's say you want students to just um, do a quick write activity or you want them to actually um, brainstorm using this. You can leave this on, you can actually move it around. All I'm doing is clicking and I'm dragging and I can move it to a, a point of the location where it's not obstructing view. Um, or you can hide it all together. Um, either way, it works. Um, one thing that you can do is you can use this as a quick write activity with your students. Project the, the image on the screen, set a timer for five to eight minutes. Um, you never want a quick write to be longer than 10 minutes. 10 minutes would definitely be your max. Um, and students write for that entire time about this image. The great thing about a, a quick write is students don't have to write in complete sentences if they don't want to. They can make bullets. They can write one word um, or different words all over their page. Um, the whole point of this is trying to get your students comfortable, get their brain going, and um, really helping those reluctant writers. A lot of time, the, the thing that causes writers to become reluctant writers is the thought of having to write a paragraph or writing a paper. Uh, the great thing about that quick write is short, sweet, you're, you're not even telling them to write sentences. Um, like I said, it can be phrases, bullet points, anything like that. Um, all the, the goal of a quick write is just to have them write for that entire time. Another thing that you can do is you can actually use these as a prediction or an inferencing activity. Again, project an image, ask probing questions, 
What do you think is about to happen in this image? Or what do you think happened right before this photograph was taken? The big thing when you're doing these, working on prediction or inferencing, is to really follow up with that, why do you think that question? That's one of the most important pieces. This, this works beautiful as a turn and talk activity um, where you have the photograph and you ask that probing question, have them first turn and talk, and then have a few share out with the class. And again, really working on that, why do you think that? What in the image actually made you think that that was what happened or that's what you think is gonna happen next? Um, to, to really work on that inferencing and that prediction. You can also use it to practice descriptive language with your, shoot, with your students, really working on that show, not tell, uh, which as we all have experienced, um, if you work on writing with your students, that is a big one. They love to tell. Um, so I know in my classroom, I had a really large display on the top uh, above the dry erase board that said show not tell, just to remind them, because um, it was such a big thing for, for my class to work on. Um, so students just working on writing descriptive sentences to describe the photographs, having them use their five senses um, to, to describe this photo uh, really helps with build that descriptive language in your students. You can also use it to practice point of view. Um, so you set a, a timer and students write from the point of view of one of the characters or one of the objects in um, this photo. So of course, if you have your students, those students that are um, your higher students, why not challenge them by having them take on the point of view of an object? that's gonna be a whole lot harder than one of the characters. Um, so maybe it's, for example, in this one, having your students write from the point of view of the rainbow or the point of view of the water droplets that are coming off the waterfall versus um, writing from the point of view of this um, person that's actually standing on the rock here. Um, but definitely you want them as they're writing um, from that point of view to use that first person. Um, and then maybe they partner up with a, with a partner and they read their work to their partner. Um, maybe the partner has to try to identify what point of view um, the student has written from. Uh, that's a great point of view activity that you can do with your students. Um, a, a final idea on this one is to practice figurative language. So again, um, have one of the photographs um, come. So again, if I wanna come, sorry about that. I can hide um, and again, I can have my students go ahead and um, uh, create a sentence using a specific type of figurative language. So maybe it's, I want them to actually use, um, I, I want them to, to write using personification, or I want them to write a sentence um, that is, includes a simile. Um, to change the photograph, I can just click this inspire me, and it'll go to another, um, it'll go to another photograph. Um, but once they've written their, um, sentence that includes the figurative language that you've asked, then again, they partner up and they share with a partner. So a lot of ways that you can use these visual writing prompts. Next up, we're going to look at um, a, our, our handwriting sheets. So we do have a handwriting sheets widget um, that actually will generate handwriting worksheets for you to use with your primary students. Um, so again, I can come over. This right here, this is where I'm gonna actually type what I want my students um, to practice writing. Maybe you want them to learn to write their name. And so you would come over and you would have them write their name the capital letter, sorry about that. Um, 
And if you want them to, um, this will have them actually trace. If you want them to trace a couple of times before they have to do their own, then again, you'll want to um, type it a couple of times. You can choose how many lines you want per page. Um, of course, the more lines you have on the page, the smaller the handwriting line. Um, so I typically keep mine at eight. And then again, you can choose whether you want it to be landscape or you want it to be portrait. You can choose the type of font that you would like. And then you can choose the color that you actually want the font to be. Um, for me, I like choosing the light gray font because then that allows the students to be able to trace over um, the word first before they have to practice writing it on their own. If it's the, the black, if I leave my font color to be black, then what I found is students can't see their pencil tracing. Um, so I like to change it over to a gray color. And then this actually is already set um, to be the um, how our um, handwriting lines are. So I click download up here. If I'm making it ahead of time, I can definitely save and I can save it as something and it, I'll be able to come back to that and I'll show you where to, to find that in a moment. Um, but I can also just go ahead and download it right then. So you'll see that I have my name and so the students will be able to go and the students will be able to, to trace over. I can change um, all of my um, lines however I would like to here. Um, and I could use this not only to learn to write my name, if uh, you wanted to, if your students are really struggling with B's and D's and they continue to um, flip those, you can just create a, a handwriting worksheet that only focuses on those two letters. Um, and maybe you want your students to practice learning their telephone number. You could write the telephone number on there to where they're having to practice that. Or maybe they're learning to write their address. Um, you can use that for this. If you're going to jump down to another line, maybe my address is 1234 Lane Street, to drop down to the next one, all you're going to do is hit enter or your return, and then you'll be able to put um, whatever your city and state and zip code is. Um, so uh, another thing is you can use numbers on this. So if I want my students to learn how to write their numbers, maybe I want each line of the handwriting to be a different number. Then when I come and I download, again, my numbers are on each line. They can practice um, tracing and then writing afterwards. So that's our handwriting sheet um, that you can create. Next up is our word search widget, um, which is right next to it. So this widget is another really great one that you can go in and um, use in a variety of ways. You could use it as a spelling center activity. So maybe you have um, your spelling list here um, or who's in my new classroom um, and have all of the new students, um, or at the beginning of the year, all of the students in your class have their names in. Um, this is where I'm gonna come and choose my word list, um, but it would be a fun back to school activity on day one. Um, I know for me, I tried to have several things on the desk of students because students would trickle in on that first day. Um, you would have some students that would get dropped off um, 30 minutes before the bell rings and you would have others that would be 30 minutes late um, and you didn't want to start your start your um, first day introductions so I would always have a word search 
on every student's desk that had their classmates' names. This was just a fun way for the students to see who was in their class. Um, are there in, any of their friends in their class? But then they also can start learning uh, the names of their classmates and how to spell their classmates' names. Um, so once you have what you would like, um, you can come in. So again, I'm gonna do my class list, who's in my new class. I can come, I can choose what size board. I can choose which font, again, that I want. I tend to go with the Xan or Blosser. It's just um, a neater handprint to me. Um, and I'm gonna choose to keep it as an upper an uppercase. I do want to include diagonals. However, if you are a primary teacher, you want to make you might want to turn this off and only have to where it's vertical or horizontal, not those diagonals. And then again, you click download. And here's our PDF. So again, it has all of our students' names at the bottom, the classmates. Um, it has, it's generated the word search, so the students will be able to go in and start working on learning their, their classmates' names. Um, again, you can use this as a vocabulary activity when you're learning new vocabulary terms in a unit. Maybe you're studying geometry, the, the um, names of 3D shapes. You could go ahead and make a crossword uh, with those um, names of the 3D shapes, the triangular prism, cube, rectangular prism, those types of things. Students have to find those words. Maybe in science you're working on a matter unit. Maybe use all the vocabulary words from that unit and students um, ha in a science center have to find all of the um, matter vocabulary terms. Um, you could also use um, specific sight words that your students are learning. Maybe you want to create a word search with compound words if you're working on compound words with your students. Um, maybe you're using words from the word wall. Uh, another fun activity is to actually create a word search before you are going to start a new topic with your students. Um, use it as a bell ringer activity. Students have to find those words and then when it comes time you ask them, what do you think we're about to study? What, you, what do you think our new unit is? Um, and they have to use those words as clues to try to figure out what the new, the new unit is. Um, maybe for your primary students, you're working on um, learning how to spell the number words, one through 10. Um, so maybe you're, you create a word search for that. Um, lots of different ways you can use this word search um, widget. Next up uh, is our random name picker. So this one, um, again, we can use for a lot of, a lot of things. Um, so I'm gonna come over to our settings menu. Um, again, I already have my class list in here. I'm gonna use that one. Um, I'm gonna close out and I'm gonna spin. I can do this to assign jobs for my students. Um, maybe on Mondays is when you choose um, the job assignments for your students or maybe Friday afternoons for the coming week. Um, this is one way you can do that. Um, another is if you select a line leader each day. Maybe you spin to find out who the line leader is that day or the caboose that day. Um, maybe if it, you need a student to go run a quick errand for you. I know for me, Anytime I needed an errand run, and I, and I would say, who wants to run an errand for me? And all the little hands would, would come up. It was so hard for me to choose because all of their little faces were so eager to run that errand, and I didn't want to disappoint anyone. That's where this random name picker really um, came in handy. I could just spin and say, all right, it's going to be um, Yvonne, come on. You're, you're the winner. Come and run this quick errand for me. Um, it could also be a way to choose a student to answer a question or come to the board to solve something. So instead of pulling those popsicle sticks, um, maybe for a day you want to change things up, you can definitely use the random um, name picker. Again, if you want to remove a student, if you are using it, maybe to choose a student to answer questions. 
Um, typically when you take the popsicle stick out, you kind of put it to the side so you don't call on that student again. You can actually remove that student and spin again. Um, just because you hit remove doesn't mean they're removed from the list completely. When you start again, um, when you come back and you actually choose um, your class list again, then all of the names get put back into the generator and um, the, the names that you removed will be put back in. So lots of ways you can use this guy. Um, next up is a random sentence starter. That's gonna be our next one that we're gonna look at. It's right here. So this random sentence starter, again, if I push play, um, it's gonna do just that. It's actually just gonna produce um, a sentence starter for your students for writing. So we have all kinds of sentence starters here. You spin, there's the starter, and um, students now have some place to start. Again, you can use this as a quick write activity with your students. Um, it works great for those students who are always saying, but I don't have anything to write about. Um, so now you can just pull this up, give it a spin, and whatever it lands on, that can be um, their idea that they then write about. If you want to change some of them, you can do that. Just click on the settings. You can go through if there are some you want to eliminate. You can definitely do that. Um, all you'll do is select the text, the ones you want to get rid of, and you'll lose it. Um, if you would like to um, add in some of your own, you can definitely do that as well. Um, you can come to the bottom and add in. If you want to remove all of the ones we've given and create your own, you can definitely do that as well. Um, so that is our random sentence starters. We also, one of our more popular ones is our student avatars. So I definitely want to spend just a few minutes on this one. Um, this one can be used for so many things. Um, so first, you can choose how many avatars you want on a page. Um, so one fun way that you can do this is you can print out one for each of your students um, and then use them every time you want to assign a new seating arrangement by just placing them on the desk. So let's say you're, it's the new nine weeks, you want to assign a new seating arrangement. You pull out your bag of avatars uh, on that Friday afternoon when the students have all left. You place the student avatars where you want them to be then on Monday, students come in, they find their avatar, and that shows them where their new seat is. Um, so if we were doing that, maybe we wanna put eight avatars on a page. Um, then you can say if you want that avatar to just be repeated eight times, or if you want different designs on each one, so we definitely would want that. Um, you can choose, again, your font, because you can put the student name on your avatar, Again, you can choose your color. Um, so here you'll see there's the tick mark. Um, if you want their name on their shirt, then you tick it. If you don't want the student's name anywhere listed, then you'll just uncheck and it'll just present the avatar to you. Then you can come down, if you are typing your student's name, um, because we did say we wanted the name on the shirt. I'm gonna type the name. I can choose my um, face complexion that I want for my avatar. I can choose my eye color uh, and my eye shape if I'd like to. I can choose my nose. I can choose my mouth as well. I can choose my shirt color, all types of things. Um, I can choose my the way my hair looks, or if I'm wearing a hat, um, I can do that as well. And then if I have any accessories. So if I want my avatar, or if my, I'm sorry, if my student wears glasses, um, then I can have glasses 
or I can choose not to have glasses by coming up and choosing the blank space here. Um, so once I've gotten my avatars to click for my second one, I'm just gonna add another avatar. Once I have them all done, I can click my download. This one takes a few seconds once you hit download um, just to generate those avatars. Um, so it will, there it is. Um, it'll come as a PDF. So again, there's Lynn. I can just use the paper cutter. I can chop um, my eight avatars out um, and use these. Um, I can also use them for your uh, for my student popsicle sticks. So instead of writing the names on the popsicle sticks with those sharpies, um, you could actually put student avatar heads on the top of each. Um, you could print them on cardstock, hot glue them to the end of a popsicle stick, um, and pull out. Um, students will love seeing their little avatar instead of you calling out a name. You hold up the avatar. Um, and the student knows that they were the chosen one. Um, it, they also work really great for your back to school bulletin board or your door display. Um, you can use them as part of your student's desk plates. Um, so if you have their name on the desk, why don't you uh, attach their avatar? They'll love seeing their avatar there every single day. Um, you can create one that replicates you, and you can actually use it on your door signs. Um, say you're doing a testing, please don't disturb. You can put your avatar saying that. Um, you can also use them for your um, to show your center or your small group groupings. So on a bulletin board, you can actually have group one, group two, group three, or however you name your groups. Maybe it's the apple group, banana group. Um, and then you can have the student avatars next to whatever group they're in, which shows, um, then you can say, okay guys, today group two is going to the computers. Um, but instead of having names, they actually are able to see their avatars on um, the bulletin board to show them where to go. You can also use it on your job charts. So instead of writing the student name, um, you could have your job chart up on the board, put Velcro on the back of each one of your avatars, and then you can just um, easily change out your job charts using the avatars. So every Friday, pull all the avatar faces off and put up the new um, people for their jobs on the job chart. So lots of ways you can um, do these fun student avatars. And then the last one I want to do today is our base 10 flashcards. Um, so these base 10 flashcards can be used so many different ways. Um, so again, I can come in, I can choose my font, I can choose my color if I'd like, um, and then I can choose my numbers. So say I want my lowest number to be 100 and I want my highest to be 500. Um, and then I can say how many flashcards I want. Maybe I want 20. Um, so again, I can generate flashcards for all of the numbers between these two. Or if I want that, then I would check this box. Or if I just want 20 flashcards and that's it, um, then I untick that. I come and I download. Let me show you what these look like. So they have the base 10 blocks at the top and the number at the bottom. One way you can use this is use the paper cutter, slice these into two pieces. You can use them as a matchup activity for a math center. You can actually use them as a random partner genera uh, generator while you're reviewing place value with your students. So every student, you've made enough for your entire class, every student gets a card. Um, they have to go find their match. One of them is using base 10 blocks. One of them has the standard form. Students have to find their partner based on whoever has the match of their number. Um, you can also use them as flashcards to send home with students for extra practice or maybe um, over um, Christmas break or winter break. Um, 
if you want students to have that extra practice. Maybe you print these out and use them for that. Um, so again, a lot of ways that you can use these flashcards as well. So those are just a few of our widgets that I wanted to go over with you. Um, so you'll definitely want to check out this page. We also have two new widgets that are going to be dropping before school starts. Um, one is going to be with money, US money, um, and the other one is going to be with uh, place value and place, base 10 blocks where they're actually dragging and dropping base 10s to create numbers. So you'll definitely want to be on the lookout for those two new widgets. Um, and so again, you'll come here to resources and you'll come to widgets. Don't forget also to make those word list. You'll come here um, to make those word list. Again, you'll just go to the home feed and click word list on the left hand side. So we are so glad that you joined us today. Thank you so much. We hope that you got some things out of this, um, some quick and easy wins in the classroom. Um, and at this webinar, it has been recorded. We will be emailing it to you uh, as soon as um, this webinar ends. So definitely be checking your email for it. Um, you can share it with any colleagues uh, that you feel would be interested in this. Um, also, um, we you'll definitely want to be on the lookout for um, our future webinars. This is, um, we, we have a webinar series that's going on. Um, so definitely be on the lookout for our next webinar. All the best and we hope to see you in the future. Bye-bye.